how important is architecture to people? How important? Architecture could be, you know, just, uh, 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 I mean, you see in a transportation net, what it is important is that the trains work. Also, not only structures who works, but also uh, and works well, you see. But also structures who are, in a way, a little bit enigmatic, because enigma <laughs> is a part of the art, you know. <laughs> If you look, uh, or if I look my own life, you see, at the speed of, uh, uh, you see, movements, you know, uh, there is a very clear line. And it comes very much through uh, this analytic understanding. And it is an analytic understanding without any fear. Why should I have fear? As uh, Giacometti say, you know, uh, uh, Breton tell him, you know, tout le monde sait qu'est-ce que c'est une tête. Everybody knows what is a head. And he said, no, I do not know. I am interested, you know, to see. So it was he, he recalled his right, you see, to analyze a head, as Rodin has done, as Bordel has done, and many, as Michelangelo has done, and many others. So I interpret this thing. Tout le monde sait qu'est-ce que c'est une tête. Everybody knows what is an arc. I want also to, uh, to analyze what is an arc. To sketch is uh, mental exercise, you could also write or you could also compute, uh, compose music or whatever, you see. It's a mental exercise uh, who goes directly from your mind uh, into your hand in a very spontaneous way. And probably is one of the most efficient ways, you know, to cap the idea and the vision that you have in your mind and also even to analyze it, to investigate, to let it uh, change and transform. The drawings, maybe in the beginning, they are very, uh, uh, um, they are very imprecise. They became, with the time, more and more precise. They follow maybe much more the intuition. And then with the time, they became more and more construction drawings. I started uh, more in an art school, went into an architecture school, then I went into an engineering school. For me, uh, um, the work as a sculptor, it, it precedes the, the architecture. So, so saying, for example, you see I have a weight, this is rather heavy. I have even done them in stone. And then I am supporting it with a single element and then holding it, uh, uh, you see, by cable. In a way, it's the same thing who happened with my head. You see, my head is all supported here in the atlas. I can also twist my body, you see, and turn around. And uh, these things, you see, very elemental things of the uh, observation of the human body. I take the spine, which it is the basic reason why we stand up, and I started working with it as the basic idea to do our building.
he, he is an artist. He loves to draw, paint, and he has always, since uh, from the beginning, always worked in, in sculpture. Also building some small prototypes when he was a student. And then after years, they became bigger sculptures, real sculptures, not just the prototypes. So I, I, I believe that architecture is, is art, should be art. I, th I really think it should be art. It's not always art. If the breaches are beautiful. That's like sculptures in, in the landscape or in the cities. In the early beginning, I was on, only doing balconies. I was doing, you know, small balconies. I had done here in Zurich balconies or for a bus, bus shelter, you see, or a delivery dock, you see, of a railway station. I was proceeding a little bit at, uh, to the research of a vocabulary uh, uh, through the sculpture. You see, I was uh, proceeding, you know, to find my own language, isn't it? What I wanted to find is my own language. Uh, uh, independent from schools, independent from tendencies, independent from any dictate, you see, to find my own vocabulary, thinking that I have the right to say whatever I want to say in my own manner. You see, I, the, the first goal, the first goal uh, in this place was to deliver something beautiful where so, such an ugliness was there before, you understand? Uh, uh, to, to, the, to deliver uh, uh, something optimistic and uh, looking to the future, you know, where so much sadness and, and depression, you know, was there at the, in the beginning, isn't it? This was our goal, not only my goal, the goal of my client, the Port Authority, the goal of every worker, you know, and everybody who has put hands to the job. the idea of being an artist. But being an artist, it does not mean, you know, living in another world or living in, uh, uh, but working very hard and thinking and analyzing that this, what you are doing, can have also a higher signification. I mean, uh, that simply doing a platform, you know, where people will wait to get a train, can be also a beautiful place, just that or thinking that the arrival of somebody coming from abroad into a city like New York can be a beautiful experience. Or, or, or bringing light deep down, you know, to, the, to, to, to show the people you are already in a plaza of New York. But fi finally, the, 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 uh, uh, is, uh, 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 is work that you have to deliver, isn't it? And work that mostly goes, you see, over uh, uh, hundreds and hundreds of sketches and hundreds and hundreds of tries, you see, believing that inside each one of us, each one of us, you know, yourself, myself, every person you see, whatever, even the most modest person with which you have to deal, you know, there is a source. Uh, and this source can deliver quality 
and can deliver uh, 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 or never will stop, you know, to deliver, so far you do not stop working on it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Good evening. Um, Good evening again. I um, hope you all can hear me and you'll be able to hear us. My name is Nikita Polyakov and I will walk you through tonight's um, discussion. Um, I would like to welcome you all in this inspirational space called CAMP. And um, this event is organized by um, IPER and National Prague's Gallery. And I would like you all to welcome our distinguished guests, uh, Sebastian Calatrava. No, Santiago. Uh, I'm so yeah. sorry. I'm sorry, Santiago. I was, <laughs> Santiago Calatrava and Cristina Carrillo de Alborno, curator of uh, Santiago's exhibition, Art and Architecture, that is going to start tomorrow at Stone Bell House. So please welcome again uh, our guests. And um, thank you. The reason, yeah, the reason, the reason why Santiago uh, is here. Uh, tonight uh, is the exhibition. And uh, in the next uh, 45 to, to an hour, uh, we'll be able to discuss his work and maybe give you uh, some inspiration uh, for, um, for the exhibition that you will be able to see tomorrow. Um, I would like to start off, uh, and basically this is the question to both of you guys. Um, it's gonna be at Stone Bell House tomorrow. Um, it is inspired by natural world, human anatomy, all your works, and the exhibition confirms it. Uh, maybe, Christine, can you tell what was the impulse to decide to have it in Prague? I know you have an interesting story surrounding this. In fact, it's very interesting and it's magic. Also, like the, you know, the when you see the structures of uh, Santiago Calatrava, you feel magic. So sometimes in, in life it happens and. Uh, uh, last year, uh, last summer, I was in um, doing an exhibition here, and we have a dinner, and there was the mayor of the city, and she was just uh, coming back from New York, and she told me, you know, I have seen the best uh, building of the 21st century, and I asked her, what is this building? And she said, it's uh, the Oculus, the path station that Mr. Calatrava has built there. So I was very moved, and also she said with a great emotion, and she has a very artistic mind, and so I told her that I'd been working on and off with Mr. Calatrava for 10 years, and we did the exhibition in Hermitage, and she said, we have to take him here. And that determination, you know, uh, and it, you, it started to move everything. So that's how it started. And she was also very generous because she offered us different spaces. And finally, I decided that, you know, the best space would be the Stone Bell House, which, as you know, is a, is a Gothic uh, palace. And, um, you know, the Gothic <coughs> style, at maybe at the beginning, you can say, well, this is not going to fit, but uh, the architecture of Santiago Calatrava is in alignment with all the values of uh, Gothic architecture, from light to uh, uh, the verticality, and also, you know, with this sense of 
uh, and the need to go beyond the material to the immaterial, the search of the spir spirituality. So all that that is in architecture of Santiago Calatrava is in the Gothic. So when you see the exhibition, you feel that it belongs there and it's very good. And it's uh, just a few words about the exhibition. And of course, we, Santiago Calatrava will talk about his work. Uh, the exhibition is art and architecture. So it's not only uh, about the architecture, but about his art, because as you know, he's a sculptor, as he was describing here, the architecture comes from the language of his uh, uh, sculpture, and also uh, he's a painter, and he's a ceramist also, so you will see a lot of uh, all the disciplines, and also I hope the exhibition will invite you to uh, discover how all the arts have no, boundary, no boundaries, no, they are all interconnected and how Santiago Calatrava work can also combine the spiritual the ge with the, with the um, reason, with the geometry, with the poetry, all elements that you may think at, at the start will not be together, they are together. And also the space, finally, uh, this exhibition is very special because it has a lot of drawings, you know, Drawing is for Mr. Calatrava. It's a sense if his way of uh, of uh, really getting the, is the process of creating. He for each project he draws thousands or even ha well hundreds uh, of of uh, drawings, and in each of the projects you will see drawings there. So it will take you to the mind of the architect and also to the sense of intimacy, which is also the way in which all the works are, are done. So I hope you enjoy the exhibition. Thank you very much, Christine. Um, uh, Santiago, the, uh, the exhibition is called Art and Architecture. Um, you are an artist, you're an architect, you're an engineer as well uh, from your profession. Um, how are these three concepts, uh, subjects, courses, so to say, um, compatible, complementary to each other in your work? Can you maybe expand on this a little? Yes. Uh, first of all, let me uh, say a couple of words about the fact of uh, having uh, the honor of exhibiting in this wonderful city, uh, Prague, and also in this very special place. Uh, I mean, uh, I knew Prague, but uh, in an afternoon like uh, this afternoon, so beautiful under the sunlight and seeing the river and the boats and the bridges and <clears throat> the Carl Bridge and the sculptures and the pinnacles of the uh, cathedrals and churches and, and all this um, incredible uh, ensemble of uh, uh, architecture, you see. So you, you really believe again that architecture can be something extraordinary, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this is the... Then also visiting the exhibition, I have to say, I appreciate enormous much uh, the fact of exhibiting in this very particular place and uh, going from one room into another and seeing uh, the work uh, uh, in a very dense manner because since the rooms are not very big, you go very close to the models, to the sketches, and and all of that, so I think it, it was very moving for me this afternoon, uh, even the fact of being here now with you and having these uh, fantastic uh, people <laughs> listening to me, uh, or to us, isn't it? Uh, <clears throat> you see, um, about the, the, the different, uh, uh, coming back to your question, um, you see, it is um, interesting almost, uh, uh, after you know more than 36 years of of uh, uh, work uh, as a free architect and engineer and also working as an artist, um, think that the things doesn't happen by by case. That it is almost like a, a, a compound of facts. You see, that my first inclination was uh, to to be eventually a painter or to be an artist. And in the fact, after having done the maturity, I went to Paris uh, to l'Ecole des Beaux Arts. But it was 68, it was uh, summer 68, and the sc school was destroyed, isn't it? So I couldn't, uh, uh, the, the, during I think two years, there was almost also not, not teaching and all of that. So I went back to Spain and I, I enrolled in the Polytechnic in the architecture school because I thought it's the most convenient 
uh, was a, an attractive solution, and I was also, also interested, particularly after visiting Paris and seeing Notre Dame. Uh, so they are, uh, I mean, uh, it seems to be a little bit banal, but it is not. It is effectively, I remember I was working in a place called to La Rue Chanoinest, and Notre Dame was just two uh, streets apart in uh, Lille de la Cité, and uh, sometimes at 11, something like that, I got a break and entered into the church and saw the light. And of that, I thought, my goodness, architecture is something extraordinary, isn't it? But mm, then also the interest in, in the profession, uh, also, and in, uh, particularly in the material part of the profession and, and, and the way how things uh, mm, are done and why they stay, who moves me also later to go. Nevertheless, also eventually because I was uh, too lazy to start to work when I was 23 or something like that. So I went to study engineer and I studied the full studies of engineer. And even I have done a PhD uh, in, or, or a, a doctorate, in a doctor work in Zurich in uh, even more technical, you know, getting into topology problems and foldability. And, and uh, so, I mean, this, uh, let's say, finally, when I look back, I think I was privileged, you know, to, to make those choices and also have the patience to, to stay for so long time as a student until I started the profession. So indeed, if you look, there is a kind of introspective way into uh, 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 different professions to discover that finally it's almost all the same. That there is not a big difference between engineering and architecture. Certainly not, you know, I mean, it is uh, uh, almost a convention that we say those guys are architects, those others are uh, engineers. So it's, uh, I mean, you see, a bridge is as important as a house or, or, or an intervention in the landscape, even uh, in landscape-wise, and so the work of the engineer on, and environmental related is also enormous important, isn't it? And, but I stay uh, all this time always following uh, the, 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 uh, I mean, uh, my first impulse was always to draw and to do sculptures, you see, for, uh, uh, and I have done that along all those years, you see, sometimes uh, always a little bit in the background because uh, effectively my modus vivendi was, uh, you see, to be an architect or an engineer, but I have been painting, I have been sculpting all my life. Until I discovered the importance of this kind of secret or, or, or uh, uh, um, uh, atelier, you see, in which I was painting and sketching and sketching and sketching and painting and holding these things a little bit in the back because I, uh, uh, I'm bringing it into models and other things that, and from the model on into the building, for me, there was uh, the thing who uh, came out of my work. But in the fact, without this research, I think uh, buildings like Tenerife or Ground Zero or, or even Stadelhofen or even the first building, you know, will not uh, be like they was. Uh, uh, in a way, uh, you see, I also understood what means uh, uh, l'atelier de la recherche patiente by Le Corbusier, he called it like that. But I mean, it is the fact that you have to create, or, or at least I try to create in my background uh, 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 in, in, or in my backyard, a kind of, of uh, um, uh, work uh, who has given a solid basis, at least at, uh, according to my own feeling, not eventually this of the critics or, or, or the people, or, 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 or I mean, but uh, has given a base to the architecture as a product. And I think the uh, exhibition shows that very well. It shows it very well because full of sketches, free sketches, and some of them uh, very uh, informal. Eh? Uh, uh, and then even studies of the human body. And so it has a little bit uh, a, a kind of, of a disordinated way, you see. But finally, you see the buildings there, and you see also the sculptures there. And uh, so, I mean, uh, I do not know if I answer properly your question, well, but... We'll continue, <laughs> we'll get to it. Uh, it's, it's a broad question. Uh, you were mentioning infrastructure buildings. You, you work mainly um, building public uh, buildings, yeah. um, not working for private businesses. Um, in this context, there's a lot of discussion what should be the role of, of architect in today's society. Do sh do, should he have any? What do you think yeah. the role? Uh, you see, uh, the fact of working for public buildings has uh, 
eventually also a personal inclination, you know, it's a personal inclination, the importance of the public work, uh, because as uh, the, the, the words say, public work is for the public. So you are working for the public, you are not working for a private, you are working for the public. That's, uh, I mean, sometimes, you know, it's as easy as that. At the other side, it is also because uh, I has had to look for work, and the only source I found to get it is uh, doing competitions. And I was telling to Christina before, I have the number of competitions I have done, 136 competitions, uh, actually. You see, it, I will keep doing, uh, so it will eventually increase the number. But I mean, it is the source who brought me to do the station, to do whatever, you know, whatever I'm building, the, the, uh, Lisbon, that we are seeing here, to Liège, to Lyon, to, uh, uh, and so it's a very hard, it's a very tough way, you know, to, to get commission. Of course, it's much easier if somebody comes and says, I like you, I love your work, and uh, make me a wonderful house. I will do also that, but mm, until today, you see, I got this, uh, I mean, I, I has, uh, has been looking for work in the competition. See, these are the, these two aspects. At the end, uh, you love this type of work. I, and I tell you why, because finally, mostly you are confronted to a client who is, is um, embodied in uh, eventually a civil servant or, or, or an institution. And in a way delivers you an enormous freedom. To, uh, you see, and also you legi legitimize your, uh, your, uh, your intervention uh, through the fact that uh, you have win it through a competition, isn't it? And, and so you have a certain legitimacy to do your own vocabulary, to be a little bit yourself, isn't it? Uh, uh, this is the, but also at the other side, I think it's a magnificent, uh, a magnificent uh, sensation, you see, to, to, uh, to, to see that or to hear that the station in New York is visited every day or used every day by more than 300,000 persons a day. I mean, uh, whatever good you do, uh, whatever you do, whatever uh, you do there, you know, and you express there in terms of touching the sensibility of the people and, and uh, contributing, you know, to, to give them a better day is even as important that uh, uh, than in extraordinary institutions, like think about Le Louvre or the Metropolitan, you know, they get 12 million visitors a year. Uh, after three days, the station gets one million. And it's, it's incredible, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's extraordinary. It's, it's, it's something, so whatever you do there, maybe many people don't get it, but they get it still, you understand? So you are touching enormous much people, people that eventually will never it's a pity, you know, but they will never go to the Metropolitan because, uh, you know, already the facade is, uh, makes a barrier, you understand, and, and, and so on. So, you see, uh, which it is a pity, I think, you know, eventually this needs also to be rethink, you know, how we can bring art closer to people. Certainly, a way is using uh, places like stations, uh, railway stations, or, or, or even bridges, you know, to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, your bridge here, you know, the Carl Bridge is eventually the most beautiful example worldwide, you know, how to bring a sculpture, how to bring uh, to the people the sense that arriving into a place, getting across a gate, uh, being in the center of a extraordinary city, you see, you are surrounded from, uh, you are in a piece of art, isn't it, a living piece of art. Mm -hmm. uh, in your documentary um, that we just watched, uh, you talk about art in the context of enigma, that uh, the structures need to be enigmatic and that you try to use it in your work. What, what does it mean, enigmatic structures and enigmatic art? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 <laughs> 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 Some, some sort of uh, you know, purity? There is a, a piece of music called the Enigma Variations uh, uh, by Elgar. Uh, uh, Enigma Variation. And there is, I think it's the number 12. It's called Nimrod. Nimrod. I would like to hear it now. I let you hear the Enigma Variation now. The n number, I think it's the number 12. In any case, the name is uh, Nimrod. Extraordinary. Extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So mm, I think the... the uh, uh, I mean, just because you use the word enigma, <coughs> it's interesting, you know, the fact of the, the language applied to architecture, you see. Because <coughs> it's a beautiful word, you see, it's like the mystery 
or also you could speak about poetry uh, and things like that, but they are all words. And, uh, and architecture is architecture, you see. So one of the things I discovered after having done this long uh, uh, way, you know, studying architecture and then studying engineering and then even, uh, and so on, so it is uh, even paying a lot of attention to the structure to discover that, uh, I mean, uh, at least now, I, I, that even architecture goes beyond all those things, you know, it's something very abstract, you know, extraordinary abstract, extraordinary abstract, you, uh, that even has nothing to do with the material of the things, isn't it? Uh, so, because they are uh, buildings who are done in steel, and others who are done eventually in canvas, and others who are done uh, like theater uh, scenographies or things like that, uh, uh, others who are done in stone, like your cathedrals, and with the copper roofs, and even with the gold globes on top of it. Uh, uh, and, and then, you see, uh, finally, uh, all of them, they deliver us sensations, you see, uh, uh, who we can uh, feel them, uh, uh, in a very uh, deep manner, and they can even move us. And this is the extraordinary thing, isn't it? It's, it's eventually, because that the word enigma is very beautiful, because enigma is something mysterious, is something, but what is an enigma, you understand? Uh, and I think also, because that a jump also to, to, to make it even more complicated and spoke about music, isn't it? <laughs> because it's something also, the music eventually is even uh, clearer for me because it's untangible. And it happens in a moment and then disappears, you know. It's even, uh, uh, and it touches us and moves us, you know. Those who can this evening hear Nimrod, the, the variation of Elgar, you know, the Enigma variation, I think well, well, they, they should do that. It's extraordinary. It's a good way also to conclude the, the day. <laughs> we'll definitely listen to it after, <laughs> after our speech. Before we go on, I would like to ask if it would be possible to, play, uh, to show a couple, of, a couple of your projects and if you'd be so kind to maybe... Um, uh, give a little elevator speeches. There is uh, four projects that you did uh, that we chose to talk about uh, in the next couple of minutes. The first is the Oculus, a uh, uh, much discussed work of yours uh, in New York, the transportation hub. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's not Oculus, uh, I'm sorry. So, but we, we but can we can, start. Yeah, we can, yeah, we can, yeah, we can start. start. We can start with this. Uh, well, I'll, <laughs> okay, I'll let's start. Yeah, maybe. <coughs> Me work. Okay, um, I don't know if they're gonna switch it more or not. Okay, we can uh, <laughs> we can do the we can maybe the house, we start yeah. by the, the next one by the the torso. The torso? Yeah. Let's do the torso. Can because we switch one more place? Is uh, yeah, because I think one of the uh, I mean, working with it's Mr. Calatrava is I, I feel that is always as you say enigma, in, and it's always an enigma how. The, the, how, the build, how the buildings okay. are <laughs> appear, you know, because when you enter into the exhibition, because uh, uh, Prague is a city of towers, you are going to see the tower of, the, of Dubai, his building, and, uh, and that tower was born, the, the origin was a lily, uh, the flower of a lily. And, you know, it could be that, or it could be like uh, maybe the torso, you know, the human torso then becomes a sculpture and then a yeah, building. We'll, yeah, we'll definitely have to talk about the, the motion and the body uh, present uh, in, your, in your work because you'll see tomorrow it's, it's, it's the exhibition is full of, of, of the analogies. But uh, back to the Oculus, uh, late, one of the latest projects. And uh, basically you said that one of the most challenging for you uh, yeah, in one of the interviews, is yeah. that correct? Uh, why is that? Yes, yes. If we can step back... We are not there. I'm sorry, we are not there. Into yeah. the Oculus, we'll if back. we can step back. Now this is Malmo, okay? This is a tower, okay. I was saying. They don't want us to talk about the Oculus. No, so no, but... Uh, no, because, <laughs> you see, it, it is about... Uh, eventually, the Oculus uh, has had for me also, um, let's say, in terms of understanding um, in a personal manner, you know, what architecture can be, you see, uh, it has, uh, was for me an important step. And I explain you why, because, uh, so we arrived to New York uh, immediately after uh, September 11, and we established in New York as a family because my kid was going to, to uh, the university in the States, and uh, first was my wife who moved uh, to New York, and then myself, I was uh, um, commuting between Europe and New York, and then 
we was invited to participate in the competition of, of and the first, uh, you see, uh, and I arrived with a very clear idea, very different from the master plan, and the, the, uh, that we have to separate the station and make from the station uh, an uh, autonomous building. I was also conscious that the station was very important because it was linking, you know, uh, uh, one from one end to another of whole ground zero, and also being uh, delivering also the basis on which the building has been built. Now, it was an important job, but I arrived, uh, you see, in a very unconventional manner. I say, uh, look, you, we better change the master plan. We put the piece in the center, and then we make a kind of a sculptural building, which it is this here, what we are seeing. Also good, you know, even, you know, the sculpture, you see, the, the building is effectively very sculptural and remembers a little bit the research I was doing at the time, you know, who was the sculptures with points and, and a, a, a bit more, you know, coming from... Uh, uh, not so much from an a pure abstraction, but uh, remembering uh, maybe a little bit the growth of plants and all of that. Now, there was a moment in which, uh, you see, if you look at the building, uh, the building is a little bit disoriented uh, in relation to the uh, uh, grid of New York. You know, New York has a very strict grid, yeah. you know, Fulton, Greenwich, uh, and, and <coughs> Church Street, you know, they are all perpendicular, you see, and uh, uh, the building should be also following these parallels, but I, I uh, tilt the building in a way that the, 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 the center of the building follows a, 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 a direction. And we was lucky that the towers, uh, as we are seeing them here, you know, they let a gap in between. And then what happens is that, you see, that the roof you see there, you know, can open. So when you go in a regular day, it's always closed. But the gap, who is 80 meters long, can open. I thought, this is an opportunity to do something extraordinary because the client has lost so much people, you know, in the tragedy. And the client, I, I speaking with the client and, and, and analyzing, you know, the, the wish of the client, they wanted to do something extraordinary to remember the people who passed away. So by tilting the building, and letting this gap of 80 meters, the gap can telescopic, you know, set back. And then you are inside the building, and you have a gap who is around six meters wide and 80 meters long from one end to another, and you are seeing the sky of New York. So far, so good. It's like the Pantheon in Rome, for those who knows uh, the church of the Pantheon in Rome, you know, everybody outdoors goes in, you know, to see the same sky that they have, <laughs> but they see it through the oculus, you know, on top of it. Indeed, the, the, the central part, they call it oculus. Now, <clears throat> we was lucky because the two towers are allocated in a way that the sun goes between the towers and there is a moment in which the sun enters through the center of the gap and create in the ground a way of light. I call it like that, a way of light. So from one end to another in the, in the paving, you have this six meters wide and over 80 meters long way of light marking inside the hole. Now, there is a moment and there is two days in the year in which the sun goes through the exact middle at 10.29. 10.30. One day is the 20, I say it, 29th of March, the other is September 11. And in September 11, at 10.30, the second tower collapsed and all was dead. So in a way, you see, in the most immaterial way you can imagine, which it is using the light of the sun and the atmospheric uh, uh, ambience inside, you are paying homage to the memory of those who passed away. And this is what you can do with architecture, isn't it? And you see, it cost, it, it, the weight of all of that is zero grams. It's nothing, no weight, nothing. It's like music. You understand? It's boom, something who happened. And you see, a couple of seconds later, it's already gone. You see, and uh, it, I mean, this dimension of architecture for me is like a new discovery. But you see, it's very far apart of any structural. Uh, of course, you need to know something about the structure to let the two wings, you see, free 
a long 80 meters and that it works and when the wind and the snow and all of that, you know, it's also, I mean, it's, uh, it's necessary to know that. But even that, you know, uh, is, is just subsidiary. Do you understand? The fact is this a, a, a fact that it will remain there for years and eventually for centuries until the people forgot September 11, like it happens, you know, with the, with the monuments uh, for wars and things like that and tragedies and so, you know, it's a matter of time and we forgot that Athens was burned down and, and Jerusalem also and Rome and many other cities has been bombed and all of that, you know. But, I mean, it's interesting to see how architecture is, uh, is immaterial. You understand? And it is untouchable, you see, almost. That it is, and it is abstract. Thank you. Uh, can we please uh, have another picture? Yes, maybe we can talk about one more project, maybe torso. Well, yeah, let's, let's do the torso. And I would like to see, uh, as, as well, talk about the bridges for, for a little while, because right, the bridges... So the yeah, torso yeah, and yeah, the bridges? The torso, yes, you can, you can stay there. The yeah. torso. Uh, you work with a lot of... Uh, you draw a lot of bodies. Um, yeah, <laughs> and uh, you work with a lot with the concept of the body, with the shape, with with motion, yeah. uh, and you project it in, in this building. Uh, how how did you think uh, when you designed it? Yes, you see, the, uh, the torso is done with a series of cubes. You know, yeah, uh, nine uh, of them. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, I use the the word cube because uh, also in the movie we saw before, uh, I started working uh, at making. Uh, I cannot call them sculptures, you know, but working with cubes and, and uh, allocating them. I, I spoke in the movie saying, you know, how our head uh, holds or our body or how we stand up and the vertebral colon, but always getting into a very, uh, in, a, in a very intense abstraction. Abstraction who for me was not unfamiliar because is like the statical model in engineering. You see, so the statical model in engineering is already an effort, you see, to make an abstraction of the reality. You see, if you think a tree for an engineer is just a cantilever, you see, who receive a certain loads and all of that and the form and all of that. So the, the, the sense of abstraction almost um, uh, like Mondrian, you see, made to also make abstraction of a tree, you know, with lines and so this thing is very common for engineers, you see, to, to um, go into, uh, is an abstract world who try to find identities with the natural, you see. Uh, maybe later on I will do a drawing because I want to explain that uh, clear, you know, it's important that the people understand that. So uh, indeed, the cubes came to me uh, uh, even before because uh, the, my, my uh, Doctor, uh, uh, the, the work I have done for my thesis as a, uh, uh, at the uh, uh, Zurich Polytechnic it started with a cube, you see, so a cube put in the main diagonal, collapsing, becoming an hexagon, and then this hexagon getting together into one line. The whole thesis is about geometrical transformations. So, so the cubes has been for me like the essence of... Uh, 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 of how to pack a space in an efficient way. And, uh, also, uh, you see, using cones. You can see in some of the sculptures here, you, you can see that using a small cones, using cables for the static and things like that. Now, you see, it was an enormous chance here in the turning torso to make, to pass almost from a sculpture to pass into a building, you see. Uh, uh, as an experiment, isn't it? It's not... I, I do not think there will be many turning torsos around. What the people discover is maybe that building can twist, isn't it? That is interesting, isn't it? But uh, even I have done also in Chicago a building called uh, the Spire, you see, who will not get realized, uh, uh, who has also this principle of twisting, which it is common also in the grow of trees and in many structures, natural structures, you know, because the Coriolis acceleration of the earth, you know, who brings a structure to grow in a certain movement. So. I mean, it, in this kaleidoscope, you see, of ideas, that is what I would like now, you know, to emphasize, uh, to, to make also even your question much more confused. You see, <laughs> it's, uh, it's in this kaleidoscope, you know, from trees to the human body, to the head, to the collapsibility of a cube. And so, is you see, how to find a way and arrive into an efficient building which people can live, 
and 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 uh, uh, became uh, 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 let's say and, uh, um, and you know de facto also realizing it so uh, is uh, 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 no, no, I, I think I didn't answer your question very properly. Okay, maybe you, you know, can draw it. Maybe you can yes, yes, it I can draw. I, uh, yes, let me let me do <laughs> that. Would be some the some uh, yes. The the yeah, and uh, the question: Can we please switch to last to last uh, picture, and would be the the Doha the Doha Bridges project? And you can yeah because um, well, yeah in the exhibition of yeah, course I we saw, are, I saw it th there are there are two uh, sections of bridges. Of course, um, as you know, Santiago Calatrava has redefined the language of bridges. Uh, this, and also in a way is cultural bridges. So there are two sections also uh, giving a connection again to, to Prague. And this is the, the last project uh, in Doha, which has three bridges together, maybe. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's your work. Yeah. Yes, uh, coming back, you see, to um, the way how I think I am uh, not answering your question. It is. I would like to give the impression, you know, to the people sitting here. Uh, at the one side, you see that, um, uh, and I think it works very well with the exhibition. It is that the turning torso, as precise as it appears, you see, as exact as it appears, uh, is the result of, a, a, let's say, almost an enormous um, a, a convection of uh, uh, things who started maybe 20, 25, or 30 years before turning torso. And I come with that, you know, again, because eventually they are here, architecture students, and other people who are hearing me. Finally, this research, you see, this uh, patience of uh, uh, work with cubes without thinking on a, a, a building, or watching you see my kids, you know, uh, who uh, started, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, standing up, you know, and then you see how complex it is to stand up, isn't it? And you see, and that is very natural for us to stand up, but, you know, we have to learn that, you know. And then thinking just about why we stand up. Nothing to do with architecture, but still a lot to do with architecture. Because, uh, 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 or, or you know, thinking on a tree and the fact that a tree twists, you know. Or, um, I mean, if you go around yourself, you know, with open eyes, with an open mind, and you conserve uh, the the capacity of surprise, uh, of surprise, you see, and of admiration of this, what is happening around you. You see, you are creating slowly, slowly a baggage from which then a building like uh, uh, um, an anomalous building like uh, turning torso can appear, you see. I regret, you see, because uh, you see how things are, because there was also another competition, but I didn't took part in uh, there in Malmö. And then later on, I thought, what a pity, because they wanted to do an station and it was possible to do another skyscraper. They never realized it. Then I thought, I will do, you see, I have done two of those sculptures. One is like that, and the other is very straight. If I could do the straight uh, figure, put one uh, cube more, and I will call it Romeo. Then the turning torso will be Giulietta. It's <laughs> even to confuse more the things. But <laughs> think about, they are two fantastic buildings of Alvaro Alto called Romeo and Giulietta. You see, that is also, it's not an invention. I don't know, other guys like Alto has been eventually, I, I, you know, I has had the, the, uh, I was very lucky because I could shake hands with him. I went to uh, Helsinki, uh, uh, direct to his office, just to shake hands with him because <laughs> see, I was a completely, was a young student, 21 years old, but I wanted to know Alvar Alto. But I say that because, you see, it's very often, you see, uh, the source of architecture is, an, uh, is the life, is everything. It's everything, you understand? Everything. It's the water this afternoon, the, sil the silver reflects on the water, the small boats, but forgot the boat, the silver, you see, and the dark of the walls behind, you know, like a painting of Rothko or something like that. So is this, uh, I mean, we have to preserve intact the capacity of admiration, you understand? And, and 
wandering uh, life and wandering and enjoying, you know, and opening our heart, you know, to places like Prague, opening our heart, let's enter in, you see, to, to, to see those yellows, those, uh, uh, the, those colors, you know, the yellows and, and beige, beige yellow colors of the, your facade. A little bit in Italian, you say, shall be, you know, washed by the water, you see, of the rain, of the many years. So, I mean, those is so enormous, interesting, isn't it? And makes also your life, in a way, as you see, for yourself, you know, not, no revolution, no thing, you know, it's just a personal matter, but it makes it even uh, uh, eventually, uh, I mean, you have something to watch all the time, you know, that is what it happens. Mm. Uh, thanks. Uh, I hope there will be a chance, or the audience will have a chance to see to see more of your, of your work uh, <laughs> during the exhibition because we don't have time to discuss all of it. So, um, if we step back and go back to the city, basically, and the environment we live in, uh, and in the, in the context of, 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 of buildings, in the context of architecture, um, how difficult or easy is to design buildings uh, for an uh, unknown future, basically? You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how the you, when you when you start doing Oculus, there was nothing there. You yeah, know? Yeah, 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 yeah. The context. <laughs> how hard is it? You know, so you know, they, uh, because you say an unknown user. I like also this phrase. Uh, there is a, a very good writer, an Italian guy called Matteo Marangoni. He wrote a book in the 30s, no, in the 20s, called Saper Vedere: How to See, How to See, and then he shows a photo of the Milano Centrale, the, the central station of Milano, who was, is written there, you know, done in the year, let's say, 2030 something of the Christian era, 10th of the fascist era. <laughs> you understand? And the guy right down below, Tomba dell'ignoto viaggiatore, who <laughs> means uh, the tomb of the unknown <laughs> traveler. <laughs> you see, I like what a courage, you know, to write that at this time, you understand? <laughs> because he's, I mean, it's a little bit, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, also the architecture can be enormous declamatory, but not interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Not interesting. So also ideology and architecture works also together, you see. It's, it's, as abstract as architecture can be, you see, for example, I give you a good, you see, um, in Spain, one of the most wonderful architectures we, uh, uh, in Europe you know, is the, the uh, Arabic architecture in Spain. For those who visit the mosque of Cordoba, they have a little bit difficulties to understand it's a Christian cathedral, it's a Catholic cathedral, but it's the mosque, it's a mosque. So you can see, you see, it's so... I mean, particularly in those days, it's so interesting to discuss about the same vocabulary, you see, used for a mosque, apply for a cathedral. But if you go to Toledo and you see Santa Maria la Blanca, then you believe you are in a mosque. No, no, you are in a synagogue who has been transformed in a church. <laughs> Extraordinary. So the architecture can be, when it is pure, when it is beautiful, when it, is, uh, it, has, uh, it, it comes from the heart, you understand? Even the decoration, you see, so you can read, you see the, the Arabic architecture as much as the Jewish one. They say you, uh, they took it very serious, the question of not making pictures of your God. So they went into the abstract, abstraction, the, the geometry, the calligraphy, the calligraphy, you know, the Alhambra. Uh, somebody called Rafael Borras, who was professor of Arabistic in Spain, wrote a book called the most expensive edition never done. This is the Alhambra, because it's all written, you know, all over. You know, there are texts, surahs of the Quran, poems, things like that, incredible, you know. It's, it's all about writing, you know, in the architecture. You see, it's, I mean, it's, it's, uh, uh, this is the fascination, you know, that the architecture and, and the lesson we should learn, you know. Architecture is very abstract and uh, it's, very, it's the most abstract of all arts, isn't it? And, it's so diverse, and I mean, I want to share those thoughts with you because this is what I'm discovering in the last years, you know, or in the last days, you know. For, I mean, it's interesting, you know, to see the more I work, you see, uh, the more uh, I see there is still enormous much to learn, isn't it?
I like the ma the magic that uh, that uh, that's surrounded around around your works, and so you talk about values a lot when you talk about architecture. Actually, uh, many interviews you did that. Um, Norman Foster uh, uh, once said that uh, architecture should be the embodiment of values, civic values. So the way we build yeah, yeah, transposes yeah. to the way we live. Do you agree? Yeah, with yeah that? certainly, certainly. Uh, do yes, he. Yeah, do you agree yeah, with yeah. this? Uh, you, you see. It, it comes also to, uh, to me an, another important point, speaking to particularly to the young architectures, um, is that, you see, mm, uh, the 20th century will be very different from the 21 as the 19th century is very different from the 20th. In the 20th century, a, a lot of doctrinary attitudes. So the people wanted to save the world. They wanted to transform it. You know, they say, we have to do chairs, you understand the Bauhaus, you know, chairs, you see, that everybody can use. We should do chairs for everybody, you know. And we discovered that they have not done chairs for everybody, uh, and uh, uh, they have done few chairs, some of them very beautiful, if you think on Mark Stamm, Mark Stamm or, or, or uh, Marcel Breuer or others, you see. And if you find one of the original ones, it costs a fortune. <laughs> so, I mean, it's almost a contradiction. You see, they wanted to save the world, you know, and make chairs for everybody, and one of those chairs, they cost a fortune today, you know, because they are part of museum pieces and things like that. Uh, then also this idea, you see, of having a rhetoric of trying to save the world. You understand? No. I mean, this is not my rhetoric. My rhetoric is enjoy my profession. And what I try to open the eye to the young student here, it is, you know, open your eyes, you know, chat, enjoy. Uh, see the, the, how beautiful green is, you know, how beautiful silver, the silver reflections in the water, shout, how wonderful are those golden globes, you know, in top that we, 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 we will not know how to use that. We, we have lost the sense of using gold. Well, in the old architecture, you see, they have used it in an enormous, beautiful and proper way. Look at the, you know, look Paris, you know, and the monuments and, you know, look, Le Pont Alexandre III, you know, with the Pegasus, you know, and the, the wings. So we cannot do those things anymore. I do not know why, you know. Look here, also the wonderful doors of the, uh, and gates and details and balconies, you see, and grids in the balconies with, you know, with gold plate and, and, and the green copper and all of that, you know, extraordinary, extraordinary. And um, in my opinion, finish with the rhetoric, you know, the redemption rhetoric, you know. What about, you know, we are all hypocrites, you know, we are here sitting very peaceful and eventually in the Mediterranean, you know, people are dying in the boat, you know, trying to arrive to Europe. And the European community is discussing how many refugees we want to take and the Hung uh, Hungary is closing the border, you know, toward, I mean, we are seeing that as much as the people, you know, during the, 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 the 30s and the 40s, they completely ignore the pogroms against the Jews and, and the concentration camps and all of that. Do you see what I mean? Is, I mean? We have to be sincere with ourselves and try in a very modest way, you know, to just make good this what we can do good. Do, do you understand? And in my case, you see, I am enormous lucky, you see, of the 300,000 guys, you know, who are eventually, who knows, you know, enjoying my station, you know, <laughs> a day, you know. But, I mean, even if I do a chair or, or if I do a modest thing when I started doing a balcony or things like that, I has done that with the same spirit and the same joy. Yes, maybe, uh, you know, with this yeah. message of to the young people and yeah. also, you know, Mr. Caratava always built with the idea that one has, is building something that will remain for the future, is the legacy for the future generations. Maybe because there is an audience here, we can let them well, to ask three questions or just we one. Have three to four, yeah. Well, I have one well, more because since you, well, since, the you last stay, one, yep. since you stayed with the students, there will be many young architects, future architects sit, uh, sitting here. One short one. Uh, when you do, you know something today that you learned later, and that you feel pity that you didn't know when you were young. Maybe an advice to young people that are going to be architects, that are studying architecture schools, that are doing art, something that you didn't know, that you know now, that's valuable for you today. Uh, well, I think, you know, sometimes when uh, even it happens to me today, it continues happening, you know, is the doubt of uh, this, what I'm doing, do it make sense or not? Or the doubt, you know, what will be my future? You see, when I was younger, you know, what will be my future? How? how uh, let's say, how I will sustain my family, you know. I, 
you see at the, in the beginning, you see I, study, I started in Switzerland. I didn't, like I say, I, I, I uh, has had very little uh, relations and I has had to find a way, you see, to maintain an office and also to, to, to sustain my family. And I would like to say to them, don't worry, you know, it will work. That is, it's a good, it's a good it is the first thing I will say, don't worry, you know, don't lose your energies and that, you know, just work. Concentrate in your work, have a joy, you know, open your eyes, don't, don't, don't feel bad, you know, your time will come. Mm -hmm. This is what I will say. I think Fantastic. it's nice, nice answer. Uh, you guys, we've got time for three uh, nice questions, so uh, if you have any, uh, just please raise your hand. We have Catchbox microphone, just, just to tell you, so we're going to throw it at you, so don't worry. Yeah, it's there. Okay. There is a gentleman in the second row. Good evening to both of you. You spoke uh, very nicely about the Charles Bridge, the Gothic one with the statues. Uh, it might come as a surprise to know that this city is also uh, a city of falling bridges and bridges <laughs> in danger of falling. And I just wonder if you ever, if you would consider building a bridge for Prague, and if you did consider it, what would it look like, given that you fairly know the city? Thank you. ¿Qué, qué es lo que ha dicho? Perdona, es que no he entendido. Que, que dice que eh, eh, Charles es una ciudad que se está, en los puentes se están cayendo, y que, bueno, que cómo lo ves, pero que si considerarías construir un puente aquí, y si lo construyes, que cómo sería el puente. Ah, sí, sí. Eh, eh, look, you see, I, I think... Um, Effectively, you know, the river is, uh, 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 you know, for cities who are built in a river like yours, uh, um, is a privilege, isn't it? The, the, the river is the emissar of the nature. You see, is, uh, uh, it, I mean, uh, in a way, if you look, the, the, particularly if you look the, the Roman foundations, they are all done on rivers. So the Romans arrived and used the rivers as a uh, um, frontier, natural frontier, and then they built a bridge. And then they installed on the side where they arrived the so-called castra, who is the camp, the camp. And uh, uh, the river was a natural frontier, and then they built a small fortress on the other side. You can see that very clear in Cordoba. Cordoba has still the Calahorra, which it is the fortress, you know, who defends the bridge, and then you have the city, uh, the, the Roman city, just behind. Even the ruins are there. It's extraordinary. Uh, the word castra is also interesting because many British cities like Chester, Manchester, Winchester, and so Chester means castra, castra. who means camp. It's very interesting, isn't it? And uh, the major part of the capitals in Europe, the capitals are Roman foundations. So Vienna, so Lutetia, who is Paris, or uh, let's say Londium, who is London, uh, and so on, you see. Uh, so far I know the, uh, Madrid is not a Roman foundation. <laughs> Still is a small river, but it's not a Roman foundation. And uh, I say that because effectively, you know, the river keeps an enormous character. And they are cities who take it up front, you see, and your city is one of them. And effectively, so is Paris, by the way, so is Paris. Eh? Uh, and uh, you see, Everything happens along the river like the river was the vertebral column of the city. And the bridges are effectively, you see, the, the, let's say the places, uh, uh, the, the, the links between and, and, uh, and consubstantial with the city. So imagine for a moment, I know less your city than Paris, you know, but speaking about Paris, imagine Paris without bridges, you know, will be another city, you know. Will be, you, you understand? I mean, people could go also with tunnels. You understand? I am thinking on tunnels or things like that. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's I mean, bridges are fundamental, are essence. They are in the origin of those cities. Your Carl Bridge, you know, is a marvel. You know, it's like is is it is also the salon of the. You understand the salon where the people go, you know, just for a promenade, with this fantastic idea of the sculpture, who, in my opinion, precedes precede the sculptures of Il Ponte di Sant'Angelo, you know, from Bernini in Rome, you know, who brings you into the, the fortress of Sant'Angelo, you see, and uh, uh, with the angels, you see, and so, but your, your uh, I mean, it's, an, I mean, it's um, 
the tower, the, the, uh, the gate to the bridge, and all these things. I mean, you, you see here in this city an enormous lesson for the young people, you see, who in, in a way they learn it in the most, in, in the real way, you know, is living in, you know, without wondering, you know, just passing the Cal Bridge every day, you know, is this what it is. It's like people say in Venice, in Venice you know, that somebody came to Venice and say, well, you know, the preachers in Venice, they should have handrails, you know, protected against children. Somebody said, you know, the Venetian children, they never fall in the, <laughs> in the canal. They are very intelligent, and then they do not need... I mean, it's this kind of thing, because they are born in these circumstances, and it's part of their own life, and they embodied it. So, I mean, it, it, finally, what I want to say is a privilege, you see, uh, uh, the, the, the location of the city. The bridges are consubstantial on it, and, of course, you see, uh, uh, if I uh, speak about Venice or uh, it is uh, 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 or Jerusalem, it is because I was privileged to do a bridge in both cities. Now, once speaking with Mr. Kissinger, you know, it happened to me to speak to Mr. Kissinger. Say, uh, I tell to him, you know, just that he recognized I have done something. You know, I say, you know, Mr. Kissinger, I built a bridge in Jerusalem, and he said to me, "How can you build a bridge? There is no river in Jerusalem." <laughs> <laughs> and I say, I say to him, I know it's a miracle. And then he laugh about it, you know. So, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I think, uh, you see, this is also, I spoke about the stations and so, but you see, bridges, have, uh, they, they are something essential and fundamental. You see, uh, before, uh, and then together with the stations are the biggest generators of cities. So imagine, for example, the city of New York, when the Brooklyn Bridge was built, Brooklyn was a small village on the other side of the, uh, 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 I mean, of the rivers, you see, and uh, then became the enormous city that it is today. And um, the same thing, you know, when Grand Central was built, Park Avenue didn't exist. But also, if you look, the configuration of all the skyscrapers are in the center of gravity is Grand Central. It's Grand Central who has generated all this development. So. I mean, it is by case that I came to these things, but certainly, you know, my heart is very much uh, propensed, you know, to do stations and to do bridges, because among the public buildings, probably they are the most public ones. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so we need to take care of our bridges, right? <laughs> um, okay, there is, a, there is a second question, if you have any. Uh, okay, there is a lady in a phone for row. Uh, I hope there will be a chance to yeah, good call. <laughs> okay, uh, good evening. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Calatrava, to, for being here with us. Thank you as well for organizing that exhibition. I'm really looking forward to visit it. And I spent a year in Lyon, like an Erasmus student, and I have to say my most favorite place in Lyon was uh, the station that you built there, uh, just next to the, the airport. Uh, but uh, me personally, I really um, admire your work, but at the same time, I know that um, a lot of your buildings have uh, been criticized uh, for different reasons. For example, for um, the lack of details and so on. So I just want to ask you, how do you deal with uh, all the criticism against your work? And what do you feel maybe uh, when you hear uh, something critical to your work? Thank you. Pero de, ¿De qué proyecto específicamente? No, no de ningún proyecto. Dice que, o sea, ella es una, es una fan de tu arquitectura, pero dice que, que no entiende la física. Lo único es decirle que, o sea, ¿cómo lo aguantas? Ah, o, o si bien, no bien. contestar nada. Sí, sí. Eh, you see, I mean, certainly, uh, you see, you have to be not only modest, but you have to be also humble and accept critics. You see, that is something that uh, happens. Uh, uh, I have to say, oh, oh, you see, in those very large uh, projects, um, as for example the Athens Olympics, um, built in such a short period of time, and uh, also with, um, I mean, with a, a limited number of middle, uh, uh, you see, you have to deliver something, and uh, um, uh, I mean, 
course, uh, these things can be subject uh, to critic. You know, sometimes, you know, speaking about music, this morning, this morning, I wake up early. It was eventually uh, 4 or 4.30, and I was working and hearing Claudio Arrau. Claudio Arrau is an enormous pianist, the impromptus of Schubert, and uh, uh, YouTube. So you can uh, you, you hear it with uh, my headphones. And uh, then I look, and then they was, uh, you see, they are fingers up and fingers down. <laughs> and <laughs> there was also a lot of guys who don't like Claudio Arrau. I, <laughs> I think Claudio Arrau is, for me, one of the most moving uh, pianists, you see, uh, you, you can hear. But, I mean, even that, you need to accept it, isn't it? You cannot. I, I, even I want to tell you something. If you go to a city close, also a fantastic city, is Vienna. Um, um, there is the secession, secession building, you know, in Karplatz. You see the secession building done by Ulbricht, and uh, uh, with um, paintings of Klimt inside. And then there is a sentence when you enter in, uh, written in the facade, who is the, der Kunst, um, ihr, uh, er, uh, der Kunst, ihr Zeit, der Kunst, die Freiheit, uh, to, to the art, the time, or to the time, the art, and to the art, the, the freedom. And then inside, there is a sentence of Schiller, the poem, who says something like that. This is free uh, spoken. It is, uh, uh, you, you should not be troubled because you, uh, not everybody likes your work, he say. Weil sie nicht alle gefallen. An alle zu gefallen ist wüscht. To, to, to please everybody is not nice. Wüscht means not nice. You know? <laughs> But more you have to uh, anstrenge dich, uh, uh, make an effort or, or, or make an effort to honor those who believe in your work. Or to, I mean, more or less is that what, uh, through your work to honor those who believe in your Thank work. Thank you. I think it is important. Thank you. Uh, one last question, please, from this side, maybe? Um, from the right side? Okay. Um, lady in a second row. Just in front of me. Good evening. Uh, I work for a company that uh, specifies in facades, and I would like to ask you a question. If, uh, when you create a building, do you consider the aging of it in the beginning of, of your creative uh, process? Because, you know, the buildings do get older, and how, how do you think about it? When you create, it, it, I, I will have to let repeat all the questions to be sure I understand them well. Please. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I think. Look, uh, you see, this is a capital question, isn't it? Uh, uh, I tell you why. You know, because um, you see, um, we has inherited. A, 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 a kind of approach to architecture, uh, you see, who um, yeah, we inherit. You see, uh, in which, for example, the corniche, the corniche should not exist. So I mean, you know, the rationalist architecture, you know, started, you know, taking away the corniche. Even there is a writing, uh, a, a text of Frank Lloyd Wright called. The dead of the Corniche. Uh, uh, so there was, uh, like you see, it happened. You see, I speak about Frank Lloyd Wright, as I could also speak on behalf of uh, uh, also another great architect, Adolf Loos. You know, ornament und Verbrechen. You know, ornament and crime. You know, so no ornament. Uh, and uh, so the fact that the Corniche disappears, you know, brings uh, 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 an exposure, an enormous exposure of, of the building. You know, to the to the rain and. Uh, uh, also, the use of steel, which it is something I have done in many of my buildings, is also something who is related, uh, you know, is temporary related, because even the best uh, coating material you can use gives you only a guarantee of 10 years, eventually 12. So finally, they are this thing, you know, at the one side, our vocabulary often, per nature, you know, is neglecting 
a research done long centuries of the importance of elements like corniche, you see, to protect uh, uh, the facade and to protect the facade from the rain and to deliver shadow or protection. And I am part of this school, you know, because I grew with this school. So that is already a contingent I am confessing here in front of you. The second part means also that if you are using a material because it's convenient for the fact and it is, uh, uh, you see, you are also related to the fact that after 10 years it should be renovated, it should be repainted, like they do in La Tour Eiffel. You know, they are starting up, you see, uh, 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 or they started down, arrive up, and then they started again down, you know, to repaint it, because it takes more than 10 years to paint the, the whole Tour Eiffel. And then you will see that this is an obligation which is not by the architect, it is by the client. So buildings need maintenance, and we should also be very energetic, you know, demanding from our clients that they also pay a little bit of money in maintenance, you see, which they very often don't do. So, I mean, it's also, it is in unjust, uh, uh, very often, uh, 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 just to, uh, uh, to, to put all the responsibility in the architect when the client is not investing a single cent you know, in uh, um, renovating, you know, changing parts of the building, who logically they get used and they be because they are very exposed or because simply they have a certain life. And uh, we are no more doing buildings in stone. And even the buildings in stone, they need also even maintenance, isn't it? And the copper roof, they need also maintenance. And eventually today we cannot use any more copper because the copper oxide is polluating and all of that. You understand? It is. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I'm just saying that uh, our culture is also finally, and this is also another contingent of our time, that we, we all, not only architects, but also the society and the clients and the investors and, 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 and the public uh, authorities, you know, forgot that the buildings survive us. They go not only over 10 years, but they go eventually over 30, 50, even 100 years, like many buildings here in the city. And so uh, uh, we are even more polluted because when people are doing an investment, they would like to earn the money as it was in the bank. It means it has to be amortized according to the so-called hypothecar interest, you know, or mortgage interest, you see. So if it is three and a half percent, after so much time, you know, you have to get your money back. And then, but still the building is there, isn't it? And the building needs maintenance and it is, and so, so I mean, it's something who needs also to be revised at two levels, finally, coming out of your question to rethinking a little bit what are the effective architectural elements who protect the building and protect it from sunshine or their eventually rain and things like that. And then the other side is also that the client has to reflect about the fact that they have to put also money beyond the building, you know, to maintain it in a proper way and to restore it and to because the things are not done for, forever, and, and, uh, and this is uh, the reality of our, our everyday profession, isn't it? Well, thank you very much, uh, Santiago, Christine, thank you for coming tonight. Uh, thank you for answering our questions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks again. Thank you that you, that you came here. I hope you're going to visit uh, the exhibition that starts tomorrow. It's going to run until September, if I'm not mistaken. So there will be plenty of time to see it, and I hope that we're going to meet uh, during some um, inspirational event similar like this. Thanks again. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Evening. Thank you. Thank you.